I had this recurring dream as, as a kid. The dream was that I was so desperate. I had something I needed to say. But there's like a million people around me and we're all the exact same height. And I'm screaming, I'm trying to say what I want everyone to hear, but no one's listening. And then as a dream goes, suddenly the ground starts kind of lifting and I'm getting a little bit taller and I start yelling and people can start hearing it. And it's like the most incredible feeling in the world because I'm getting out what I felt like it was so desperate for them to hear. How I read into that is that I really feel like everything that I've gone through and things that I've learned and how I've learned them have given me something that I know can make a difference. Let it flow. Growing up, my biggest issues were intense anxiety, so much fear. I had an experience when I was four years old that was devastating to me. And it gave me that notion that I'm not enough I'm not loved. If I was, these things wouldn't have happened. In order to deal with this intense negative emotion I was feeling, I developed these OCD behaviors. And they made me feel like a crazy person. So I had this part of me that felt insane and this other part of me that had this bright imagination of this incredible life I dreamt of having. I could feel it. I thought, well, how would my life feel if I could just be free and just be me? And that pleasure that I felt in thinking of that scenario allowed me to literally, on that day, stop all those behaviors. And that freed me, and that's when I found triathlon. Something where I can push myself beyond what I think I'm capable of and find out what I'm made of, because it's time that I know who I really am. It was this challenge that seemed so impossible. I didn't know how to swim. I was learning how to swim at 23 years old. I was embarrassingly bad at it. My first race was a disaster and people were laughing and people were pitying me and people were like, oh my God, that poor girl. But the thing was that when I was racing, when I was in the race, I didn't notice any of that. I was just like, oh my God, this, it was like this freedom this release, I was out there doing something that just I thought was the coolest thing ever and I was doing it and I felt free. I was saying, yes, you can, when before I would have been like hiding in the corner. We go home that night and I'm in bed and you know how when you get in bed at night, it's when we become our most vulnerable suddenly I'm getting bombarded with all the pictures of what was actually happening outside of me during the race and that was the looks on people's faces and I broke down in tears and I, like like literally floods of tears and I went into my mom's room and I'm bawling and she said I know honey you're so good at so many things let's it's so great that you did a triathlon and I'm like no, you don't understand. I want to be the best in the world at this sport. And it was in that moment, that was the exact moment where I took a chance on me. I didn't have the kind of confidence to say I want to be the best in the world at something. Like, I don't even know where that came from. But it came from my heart, so deep in my heart. I did everything in my power to get stronger, fitter, faster, more knowledgeable about the sport. I mean, my life became obsessed with making this happen. Triathlon was the vehicle through which I found myself. That's the greatest gift I could have ever asked for. When I won the world championship, I remember crossing the line. I just started to cry, and I remember looking up to the sky and thinking, thank you, God. I had never felt so blessed as I did in that moment. As I crossed the line, they're saying, Siri Lindley, world champion. And I'm like, wow, that's me. I can't believe it. I would have never thought it could be me. Ready, go. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing now is just exactly what I feel I'm meant to be doing. I was meant to have that experience as an athlete because it allows me 
to serve my athletes, serve anyone, and be able to say, look, these are the things that you'll go through in life and, and they're hard, but if you stay strong and you believe in yourself and if you fail, you're learning. If something doesn't work, just change direction, find a way. When I see one of my athletes achieving their ultimate dream, that feeling in that moment is even a million times greater than what I felt on the day when I won my biggest goal, which was the world championship. There's that quote, I saw the angel in the marble and I carved until I set it free. As a coach, I feel like I can see that angel in the marble in each of my athletes. Guys, nice job. I have one in particular here who is a model and she had asked me to coach her about five years in a row and I just loved how she never gave up because each year I said, I'm sorry, I don't have space. I can't take you on right now. I remember talking with her and saying, well, how serious are you about triathlon? She wanted to find out what she was made of. I said to her, well, if I'm gonna take you on, then you need to move to Colorado. No more traveling all around the world. And I never thought she would agree to it, but she did. She moved out a week later and she is probably the least fast on my team. But what she's finding is that each day as she pushes herself beyond what I know she's comfortable with, as I push her to do things that she would never dream of doing, she's developing more confidence. As she gets more confidence, her performance increases and it's an absolute privilege for me to have the opportunity to be the one to say I want you to go this hard and yes that is so freaking scary and each day you're gonna take a step further away from your comfort zone and that's gonna open up so many opportunities for you as an athlete and as a human being yeah mm -hmm. right 15 15 15 might have to dig a little deeper. Somebody said, how hard has it been being a woman? And I'm like, it had never occurred to me. Being gay, now that might hold me back and prevent me from achieving things, but being a woman, never. This is that love that I thought was only a thing of fairy tales. And I have this love now. I had been in the closet for a huge part of my life because I felt if I came out and told people who I really was, that I would lose people's respect, lose their love, lose any opportunities to be great or to be respected. And I was terrified of all of that. How old is she? She's only four. She wouldn't even let anyone touch her. She wouldn't let anyone go near her. Yeah, she's just getting lots of love. When you begin to accept every part of who you are, what I realized is that suddenly I was firing on all cylinders. There was no part of me that was sitting on the bench. There was no part of me that I was hiding or rejecting. All my masks were torn off and now I'm just me. And every relationship, whether it was relationships with my family were deeper and richer than ever. Relationships with my athletes, they suddenly seemed to be trusting me more than ever. My opportunities in my career just blew up because suddenly people are seeing all of me and not just this watered down version and so the power of that authenticity and being authentic and being all of who you are not being ashamed that gave me such life I felt like I was finally like fully alive yeah <laughs> you can choose to be a victim of your own life or you can choose to be a superhero of your own life. You can have two people that have had the exact same upbringing, the exact same experiences. What happened to me happened to, to them and go two totally different directions. I'm living proof that if you even have this impossible dream, something that seems so ridiculous that people around you would laugh if you told them, if you want it bad enough and you have a deep, deep why, then there's no doubt in my mind that you can make that dream come true. You just have to be willing to do whatever it takes. You're always going to have struggles along the way and you need to embrace those struggles and look at them like, okay, great, here's another learning opportunity and I'm going to embrace it and I'm going to learn and I'm going to grow and then I keep barreling forward.
a lot of people, they think of their impossible dream and they're like, that's never gonna happen. Like, what a joke. I can't believe she's saying that that's actually possible. Well, it is. It's just, you have to commit to it. I believe that having great mentors is crucial to anyone's growth and success in life. The great athletes in any sport today, and especially for women, um, you want them to be wonderful role models. You want them to be somebody that the kids don't look up to just because they're achieving, but they look up to because they're making other people feel good. They're, they're bringing out the best in the people around them. And if we have role models like that, then we're gonna have just a beautiful world full of strong, fearless, fierce women that are loving and kind and giving and gracious. And that's a beautiful thing. That's inspiring.